Hi, in this video I'll be creating the same scene in both Blender, EVNX and Unreal Engine and in comparing the results. Please note that this is purely a comparison video and I'm not promoting any specific software. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Store website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high quality game ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. I've already created the scene and I'll be explaining what I did and which features I enabled. First thing is materials are very simple. I should also mention that I downloaded these models from Quixel Bridge. I didn't use any complex calculations for the shaders and you can see the results through the applied effects. All the models have the same set as in materials. Alright, let's go over the effects I've used. The first one is fog volume, which is crucial. I've explained how to create this fog volume in detail in the tutorial here. The fog volume creates ambient god rays and sun effects. Fog and atmosphere are two of the most crucial elements in any environment. Next, let's go to the world section. For the lighting, I've used an HDRI. This lighting uses a sky texture, and I have explained the process in detail in the tutorial here. This lighting direction works well. I downloaded the HDRI from HDRI Haven. Alright, let's move on from the lighting and focus on the render settings. As you can see, EV is selected, and ray tracing, the most important feature, is enabled with these values. I won't go into detail about these values, I've already explained them in the tutorial here, but you can use these values to see the results. And next is the color management. To achieve a warmer tone, I used the Kronos. You can notice the differences when compared to AGX. Now let's compare the scene with and without ray tracing. Many features like global illumination, reflections, and others are enabled by ray tracing. Additionally, be sure to use jittered shadows to prevent shadow leakage. Increasing the number of shadow rays improves the quality of the shadows. In the world settings, I selected these values and jitter is enabled for the sun. If you're not sure what jitter is, I've explained in detail in the tutorial here. Next, let's go over the compositor. I've used some simple notes here and real-time compositor is enabled as well. Here's how the scene looks without post-processing. Now let's revert it back. A glare adds brightness to the scene, while lens distortion wraps the edges of the view. I applied a green tone to the scene using a color balance note. These are the settings I applied to the scene. It's now ready for rendering. For Unreal, I only need to export the scene along with the materials applied. Navigate to File and then select Export and choose FBX. Here choose a name for the file. Then enable the Active Collection or Visible Objects. Leave the rest of the settings unchanged. Just make sure to disable the animation before exporting the scene. Here's the result of the previous scene in Unreal Engine 5. The materials and textures are the same. Now let's take a look at one of the materials. However, I created the materials because once exported from Blender were not fully compatible with Unreal. Let's explore the scene and then I'll explain each attribute I used. First, we have the directional light or sunlight. I've opened the attributes where I adjusted the values. For instance, I select a low intensity value to match the result in Blender. As you may know, Unreal's lighting is quite intense and the white color is good. 
Scroll down and you'll find the second attribute, light shafts or god rays. This effect which you see here is caused by the sunlight colliding with the objects. I've selected these values, but depending on your scene and lighting setup, you may need to adjust them accordingly. I didn't make any changes to the other attributes. Next we have high fog, global fog volume that resembles the one I used in Blender. I selected low value and it's enough. Next I selected this color for the sky's atmosphere. Next we have volumetric fog, a physics based fact that interacts with light and other elements. You can notice the differences when the volumetric is enabled versus when it's disabled. For instance, in these areas the colors are just to align with the overall tone. The remaining options stay unchanged. Next let's look at the sky atmosphere, which many elements including global illumination rely on. You can see the color I selected for the ground. The atmosphere is set to this value. Using lower values will make the scene appear brighter. Let's adjust the value from another perspective. As you can see the light is too intense and it doesn't look good. Next we have Mia, which controls the intensity of the light, adjusting it results in a smoother, dark light. Setting the value to zero gives me a harsher light. You can adjust the Mia color here, but the white color works fine for me. Finally, a low value for Mia absorption is enough. In the art direction section, you can adjust the light lens. Let's adjust the aerial value from this perspective. This value positively affects the scene. Next we have skylight, which significantly affects both indirect lighting and global illumination. Here are the values I selected for this entity. The color matches the scene's tone. Adjusting the scale affects the balance between dark and dark lighting. I left the volume and cloud settings unchanged. I added a reflection probe from this menu to distribute the scene's light and reflections more evenly. Exactly from here. A large scale was selected to cover the entire scene. And I didn't make any further changes. I added a local high fog that works alongside the existing fog volume. This provides better shape and control over the high fog, allowing adjustments by changing the density. Scattering controls how the fog interacts with light and shadow. Lastly, I used the post pressing volume with bloom to enhance brightness in the light areas. This value works effectively. Next is local exposure, which adjusts the scene's contrast. A value of 1.1 should be sufficient. Color grading allows you to adjust the temperature and tint, with temperature controlling whether the colors are warmer or cooler. However, tint adjusts the scene color adding different hues. The toe in the film section adjusts the contrast and this value works effectively. The most important part is ensuring that the lumen system is active for global illumination. Also make sure this system is active from the project settings. It needs to be enabled for both global illumination or GI and reflections. It's also enabled for reflections in the volume and I didn't make any changes. These are all the adjustments I've made. 
and I worked on making both scenes in Blender and Unreal look similar. Let's see the results. This video was a comparison. I'm not promoting any particular software. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.